Hello friends, welcome to jwreasoning.com. I just wanted to take a moment and just weigh in on this topic of beards. I've had a number of people contact me and just ask me my thoughts. And I thought we'd talk about where's the watchtower headed. And I really, I don't know that anybody knows the answer to that. <laughs> but I just, I wanted to talk about beards for just a minute. And I'm sure there are other videos out there that have said this. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of time to watch videos and see what other people are saying. But, you know, the Watchtower is not going to be able to just allow beards and not say anything, not have any kind of a standard or rule, because this is how they roll. I mean, they cannot go without having an opinion or a way of controlling or manipulating people's minds. This is how they're designed. Could you imagine a brother, whether it's a, a servant or just a publisher, an elder or circuit overseer, coming in with a ZZ top, sporting a ZZ top type of beard? Could you imagine that? There's a big fire truck coming. So just bear with me just a moment while he makes his turn. But, you know, could you imagine a brother coming in with a ZZ top beard, this big long beard, or something big and bushy? They're going to have to say something. They're going to have to say it's got to be trim, it has to be chopped, it has to be contoured with the face, whatever. I guarantee you, I feel very confident that they are going to have to come out with a watchtower or a kingdom ministry or... Do they do the kingdom ministry anymore? I don't even know. But, you know, I, I should be keeping up with that better. But they'll have to come out with something, some kind of a statement to say that you know, the beards have to be trimmed. We have to look a certain way. I guarantee that's going to happen. Another thing that I've thought about is, you know, a lot of people are asking about the disfellowshipping policy. Do you think they'll loosen the reins a little bit on the disfellowshipping, on the disfellowshipping policy? And, you know, that's very possible. Uh, I really think that would be wise. Uh, while they might lose some membership, they might also increase people that would sometimes attend the meetings because they want the fellowship of people. You know, it's, it's hard to say where they're going to move on that. They're almost, in some countries, from my understanding, forced into doing that. But we'll see how it works out here in the United States. Another thing I've been asked is, what do I think about the blood policy? Well, my opinion, I don't know if it's worth anything, but my opinion is that they really can't retract the blood policy without going into... Uh, courts to try to defend themselves from lives that have been lost. They're in too far. They can't retract it. They have to stick with it. Because if they retracted it, could you imagine the suits that would come up or the people that would say, hey, my loved one, my son, my daughter, whoever it is, lost their life because of this policy that was supposed to be biblical, which has now changed. God's word doesn't change. So, you know, they might be able to use those articles to say, they say that God doesn't change, yet these, this organization changes its doctrines constantly. That's another thing. And, you know, how far will the Watchtower go? Will they start accepting, you know, they've already kind of modernized the music. They're using their videos and the, in the, uh, their music videos and the Watchtower JW Broadcasting. And how far will they go? Will they start bringing live music? I remember years ago, we used to have piano, piano player. Will they start bringing live music back to the Kingdom Hall? Will they start doing this with bands like uh, nominal churches have done? There are churches out there in uh, mainstream Christianity that have bands. And, you know, the organization thinks they are pioneers of so many things. I remember a friend of mine who was going to the meetings calling me saying, Wow, they put up monitors in the Kingdom Hall. Can you imagine that? I wonder wonder what other people would think of that. And I said, well, you know, churches have been doing that for two decades. You know, the, the organization's finally getting up to speed with where other churches and denominations and organizations have been for many, many years. One other thing uh, is, you know, you think about how these other churches, if you've ever visited any, a lot of churches have, when you go in, and not, and not that I necessarily agree with this, but it's just, I wonder how far the Watchtower will go. When you go to the church, they have uh, actually refreshments. They have coffee makers and soda machines and donuts, and you can go in there and get danishes and biscuits and just all kinds of things, depending on the church right here in the community that I live in. Will the Watchtower resort to that? to get membership up. 
a lot of churches say that when they started doing, I know the pastors and a number of churches here, and they've told me that when they started doing the refreshments, their attendance increased. When they brought rock music into the church, their attendance increased. So people are really going there for the concert a lot of times. And will the organization do this? You know, they may get desperate enough, they might. It's hard to tell where they will go. The other thing is that I thought about not too long ago was, will they loosen their uh, their reins, so to speak, on brothers wearing earrings or wearing having piercings, sisters having noses pierced or eyebrows? Are they going to loosen the reins there? Will they allow publishers to be able to do that? Time will tell. You know, I I don't know how liberal they will get. I don't know how lenient they will be with their some of their things, but they are changing quickly because they're bleeding at the jugular. And what they're trying to do by some of these policy changes is they're trying to put a band-aid on a bleeding jugular. And really, this organization has they're they're kind of self-destructing, but there will always be followers, friends. There will always be people that will go and follow that organization and support it no matter what. They're not going to back away from, from the organization because they really believe that their salvation is there with the organization. But I hope you will continue to study and keep in mind that your salvation does not come from the organization or any organization or any church for that matter. Our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. So I, I'd like to know what your thoughts are here. I'm sure there are many, many videos to talk about these things. These are just some of my personal thoughts. I don't do that a whole lot, but I just wanted to share that because a number of you have asked me. Friends, keep studying your Bibles. And remember that salvation doesn't come through an organization, a church, a denomination, a YouTube channel like this, through any man except through Jesus Christ. Please, friends, keep studying your Bibles. Keep studying. And my prayer for you is that Jehovah will continue to bless you until we meet again.